Good morning, everyone, to BC214, our course on developing the human spirit. Thank you for joining um, the class today. Let's pray and we will get started. Thank you. Somebody could pray? Father God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for this class as we are entering into this class and um, you give us the understanding and wisdom to uh, learn from your word, God. We surrender this class into your hand. We surrender all the students and faculty in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So I just a few minutes back posted the um, class course overview PDF and course notes. Um, I will request um, um, Pastor Nancy also to Xerox them and give it to you, so you can have a print version of it. Uh, but today we will use the PDF for the class. Right? Let me just go ahead and um, share that online, so you can watch it. Um, so this course on developing the human spirit. Uh, what are we going to try and learn? So, um, if you, if example, if we uh, want to, you know, uh, take part in athletics, example, we go to a coach, example, just think about somebody who wants to compete in, say, 400 meters race. And they want to compete at state level, national level, or even international level. What will they do? They go, they'll join usually a sports academy, uh, go to the, uh, uh, there'll be a coach. And the coach is going to train them on how they can develop their physical body and to some extent their mind so that they can perform well in that event. Right? So he's going to train them. So this is how you train your body. You build your muscle, you do these exercises, you keep practicing like this, you do all these things, so that you can do well in your particular race, you know, whatever, whatever athletic event is. So they're training their body, and to some extent their mind. Or if you think of somebody who wants to be a doctor, or whatever profession, you go to engineering college, or whatever college, you spend three years, four years, sometimes, if you're going to do a PhD, it will be four plus another five, nine years in studying. What are they doing? They are developing their minds, right? In a particular field, in order of field of choice, they are made. They are training themselves over many years <clears throat> so that they can do well, right? Now, how far, how high they want to go is up to them, right? How much they train, how much they. You can do a bachelor's, you can do a master's, you can do a PhD, you can whatever, you can do research, whatever. Similarly, for us, what's important is how we train our spirit. Right? Because our goal is to walk with God and to serve God. Right? Our goal is to walk with God and to serve God. For that, most important part of us is our spirits right of course we use our mind of course we have to live in this body those are important uh, but we want to focus on how do you train the spirit how do you train it and it's a journey right nobody becomes a doctor in one year <laughs> you you have to study for maybe nine years and even after that you have to practice and the more you practice the more you become better, and then people also come to you. And so that you go to that doctor, he's very knowledgeable, he's very experienced. Why? Because of many years of practice, right? It doesn't happen fresh out of college, no. Uh, it doesn't happen that way. There's so many years of practice, then they say, yeah, he's very good. Or sports person, athlete, everything, in every area. That's how it is, right? We have to train, and the training happens over a period of time. And then you become good in what you're doing, and then you can really serve people or you know whatever you're called to. So that's what we want to learn in this course. How some things about the human spirit, right? We need to understand. 
So for example, you're training your body, you need to understand some things about the physical body. Okay, the body is made like this, the body needs this kind of food, the body needs this kind of rest, etc. You want to train your mind, you need to understand some things on that. So here we our goal in this course is to understand how uh, some things about the spirit, the spirit part of us, and what are some things that are taught, given to us in the Bible that can help us you know, develop our spirit spiritually right and so so we want to um cover uh, you know discuss that and uh, the goal is we can walk with god and we can serve god well right? walk with god spiritually god is a spirit so i can't go and say good morning shake hands with god <laughs> i can't do that <laughs> i can't i may want to but i can't because god is a spirit it's not physical Emotion, yeah, some amount. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind. I love God. And my emotion, of course, my body, I consecrate. But most important is the spiritual part of us. How do I connect with God? God is spirit. That means my first way to relate to God is spiritual, in my spirit. And so, how do we do that? Then, how do we serve God out of our spirit? Okay, so that's the focus thing. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to understand the human spirit. We want to understand what are the functions of the spirit and how some practical is, how do we develop the human spirit. So you begin to apply these things in your life. Starting from this semester, you start applying it, start practicing it. And uh, of course, you know, you don't stop after you graduate. <laughs> you have to continue. <laughs> so, oh, I learned it in that course, finished one semester over. No, no, no. This is not for one semester. This is for your rest of your life. We have to practice these things and keep on practicing, keep on doing. Okay. Um, we, we'll be only having one lecture a week um, because uh, we don't need that much time to cover the, the content, just one lecture. So that means this whole semester we'll only have about 16 lectures approximately. So it's, it's going to be a light, not, not very heavy, it's going to be light. But at the same time, it is also a very important course. Uh, it's also a new course, meaning um, as oh dear, I should not open that. Uh, this is also a new course in the sense that uh, we have. Um, I think it's only about the last three years or so we've been teaching this course. Yeah, maybe maybe three years. So it's, it's new. You know, so it's something that we. Uh, we we introduced uh, a little later uh, in the, in, the, in our journey as a Bible college. Just felt that we need to you know emphasize on this, uh, explain this to students so that they can understand um, how to develop the human spirit. So uh, some of these things you would have heard in other courses, like there is an overlap uh, of some of the content. You would you would hear you would hear heard it in understanding the prophetic or in, when you're about learning about the gifts of the Spirit, you know, we touch on these things, but here we will take those same things and go a little deeper uh, in all of those areas. Okay, So let's get started. Lesson number one. The first thing we want to emphasize is that we are tripod beings, right? And I want us to focus in on the Spirit. So let's read some scripture. Uh, First Thessalonians, again, these are familiar scriptures, they're not uh, all new to us, but it's good to open and go, go through them, um, uh, read the scriptures together. First Thessalonians, uh, we look at chapter 5, First Thessalonians 5.23, um, and then Hebrews 4, verse 12, and also First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. So, First Peter. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul writes, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible teaches us, and this verse puts it very clearly, but of course you can see it throughout Scripture, that as people... We are, we are, there are three parts to us, right? There is spirit, soul, body. Three parts to us. And we can see it throughout scripture. Now, sometimes 
um, the uh, some sometimes uh, the spirit and soul may be referred to in combination as together when you say inner man say it's an inner man or oh, you're referring to both spirit and soul so it's in combination sometimes but we need to be clear in our minds we are tripart beings there is spirit soul body each part of us has a primary function right the body connects us to the natural world okay so here in the body others can see you you can see others the soul is our mind our emotions our will the psychological part of us the emotional part of us um doctors will study the brain that's the physical organ they'll study that they'll work on it they understand it uh, they understand the chemistry of it etc the brain psychologists will study the the function the emotions part right which you cannot see under a microscope you can't brain you can see oh yeah you can check you can do x-ray this that and all but the mind is something very abstract. You can't see it, but you know it's there. Uh, yeah, okay, this is how you're feeling. Uh, this is what your emotions are. This is how you're thinking, etc. So mind is there, but you, it is a little uh, abstract. You know? But psychologists study that part. That's the soulish part, the mind, the emotions. Then there is the spirit part. The spirit... Our spirit is what connects us with God. The human spirit has a starting point. That means the human spirit is created by God. And that's when we are born. Right? God creates us. We all had a beginning. But God as, as a spirit is eternal. He never had a beginning. God is spirit. But as a spirit being, he never had a beginning. He's eternal. You and I, we are spirit beings. But we had a beginning when God created us. But the spirit is that part of us that can connect with God. You know, that is what in our spirit we connect with God. It connects to the, or I should say, it connects to the spiritual realm. Right? With God or some people. Uh, Connect to the dark side, to evil spirits and other things, right? That's also possible. Now, in um, in uh, the, the interesting is in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the Greek word for spirit is pneuma, pneuma. Hebrew word ruah, the equivalent ruah, yeah, the equivalent. So they actually simply mean wind or breath, air. You know, so holy, and it's the same word that's used either for God as spirit, holy spirit, human spirit, evil spirit. That word spirit, same pneuma. Okay. Same word, pneuma. For well, so we have to understand from the context: is he talking about human spirit? Is he talking about holy spirit? Evil spirit, but the word itself is pneuma, just means like air, breath. So, air or breath or wind, we can't see it, but you feel it, you know it's there, and you know when it's not there. If it's not there, we all die. <laughs> so, if it is not there, we know, if it is there, we know, but we can't see it, but you can feel it. So the spirit is like that. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. It is there. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not very important. It's very important. And you can recognize it. You know, like when the wind is blowing. But sometimes it can blow very hard. You know, it can be even destructive. You know, I mean, it can cause things to happen. But sometimes it's almost like it's not there, like in this room, right? Right now, it's almost like there is no air. I mean, it's very calm, very 
but there is air. That's how you and I are here. We're breathing. But it's here. But it's almost like it's not here. Because you can't feel it. Not, no, no, nothing is blowing. Nothing is very calm. But sometimes it can be very forceful. Right? So the spirit. Uh, I'm talking about human spirit. It's like that. Right? We can't... Um, generally, you don't feel it. But you are a spirit. But sometimes the spirit part of you becomes very, you know, hey, I'm feeling something in my spirit. I'm feeling God's presence. I am, or I'm hearing God's voice. You know, your spirit it becomes very active. You know it's at work. Because you can't explain any other way. If you're not touching it, you're not thinking it, but in your spirit, you know. Okay. So um, uh, spirit, soul, body, we talked about. Now, let's go to Hebrews 4.12, please. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. Somebody could read it. Who has the mic? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Mm. So, but I want I want this point out a few things. First of all, this verse is telling us, is very clearly telling us the spirit and soul are different. Okay. Because it's saying the word of God penetrates and separates spirit and soul. Hmm? That means there are two separate parts, spirit and soul. Sometimes it, they because they're inside us, it seems so, but they function so close together. Because what you feel in your spirit, you will pick up in your soul. So it seems so close to each other, the way it, they function. What you feel in your spirit immediately comes into your soul, your consciousness, that you recognize, I'm feeling like this, or I'm hearing this, or God is putting this thought in my spirit. So, in reality, in experience, it seems like they are one, spirit and soul. But, just like the joints and the marrow, or example, you take the bone and the marrow. It is one, actually, you, you take any bone. The marrow means the things that are inside the bone. It's, in the, it's one, very close, but they are two different parts. But they're together. So like that, spirit and soul, in the way they function, they may seem so close to each other. But, so, but they're distinct, separate parts. The second thing is, it is the Word of God that can go inside and give clarity. What is from the spirit, what is from the soul. Hmm? It is the word of God. And it is the word of God that discern it, it not only distinguishes, it also discerns the thoughts and the in intents of the heart. That means it's the word of God that can tell you what is coming from the heart. Okay. So the more we saturate our spirit and soul with the word of God the clearer it is going to become for us to distinguish what is from the Spirit and what is from the soul. Because it is the Word of God that helps us distinguish that. Right? So many times, people, you know, as, as believers, we have a problem. Is that me thinking or is that God, <laughs> God saying? Yeah, problem. Common. It's not uncommon. Almost all of us. <laughs> hey, is that from the Holy Spirit or is it my own mind? My own imagination. How am I going to how are we going to be in a place where we can distinguish what is from the spirit, what is from the soul, and how can we discern, test, and validate 
the thoughts and the intents of the heart. How? By the word of God. It is the word of God that has that kind of effect. So that is why we have to just constantly uh, saturate our inner person with the word of God. Right? The more we are able to just can keep keep filling yourself with the word, read it, listen to it, meditate in it. We will talk about how to do it. And, uh, the more you put that word of God in, you're able to distinguish, yeah, this is from the Holy Spirit. No, no, this is my own thought. And you're also able to test and validate the thoughts and the motivations that come. Hey, this is a good thought. No, no, this is a bad thought. This motivation, yeah, it's good. No, no, this motivation, not good. You're able to do that. And the more easily we can do it, um, we're able to walk with God. You know? We can leave out the unnecessary thing, walk with God peacefully. Uh, you're walking in step with God. Otherwise, Many times there's a lot of confusion. Ah, is it God? Is it not God? Is it right or is it not right? You know, uh, is that thought good or not good? Is that motivation, is that good or not? You know, is it pleasing to God, not pleasing to God? A little confusion is there. And the way to address it is saturate yourself with the word of God. Because it is the word of God that can go down to that level to distinguish spirit and and to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay, So Hebrews 4.12 is telling us that. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. And uh, verse 4, very interesting, very interesting verse here. Um, Peter is actually... In this chapter, he's actually writing to women, okay, and uh, he's uh, giving instruction on how wives must conduct themselves, etc., and how they must adorn themselves, etc. But while he is talking about that, he's teaching us something about the human spirit. So that's what we want to focus on. All right? So let's read verse. Um, First Peter chapter three, um, verses three and four. Verses three and four. Somebody can read it. First Peter chapter three, verses three and four. First Peter chapter three and four. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth uh, in God's sight. Mm -hmm. So look at verse 4 very closely. Peter says, so he's saying, okay, don't focus on you know, the outside. Doesn't mean you shouldn't have bath and comb your hair and all. <laughs> of course, yeah, <laughs> bath, comb your hair and you know, keep yourself neat and tidy and all that. That is all fine. You're not saying don't do all that. But he's saying don't focus on that. Instead, focus on this, verse 4. Rather, and I'm reading from the New King James, he says, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. It's the first thing to think about. The hidden person. That means the outside is the outward person. You're seeing me outside. This is the outer person. The heart. So uh, I forgot to say in the beginning. Spirit and heart are used synonymously, meaning interchangeably. Hmm? Heart, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in the norm, natural, refers to the physical organ, but that same term is also used for the spirit. Hmm? Heart. So heart and spirit is used interchangeably in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, when it uses the word heart, many times it is talking about the inner man, spirit and soul together. Old Testament. So just had to keep that in mind. Hmm? Old Testament, heart, spirit, and soul 
New Testament heart, spirit. Okay? So here I'm saying the hidden person of the heart. That means your spirit is your hidden person. That is the real person. The outward man is the physical person. People see. But the outward man is, or let me put it like this, the spirit, the hidden person, that is the real person. That is the real person. And he says, the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That means, the things of the heart are incorruptible. Whereas the things of the physical are corruptible. They, they will decay. So you think of an athlete. Hmm? Same example. He's good. He becomes, you know, he becomes a very good athlete. After a few years, hey, why are you not running so fast? <laughs> what happened? At that time I was 20 years old. Now I'm 40, I can't. <laughs> so that strength, that energy, it is not, it reaches a peak and then goes down. Gone. But that's not true about the spirit. The things of the spirit can be maintained. I mean, of course, we can lose it if somebody doesn't want to pay attention. They lose it. But it is incorruptible. It doesn't have to decay. The incorruptible beauty. Hmm? So that's the second thing. The third thing is, he's saying, beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That means the spirit has characteristics. Here he's mentioned two, gentle, quiet. So, in the natural, we use the word personality. Hmm? Each one, each person, each individual has a certain personality. Hmm? Uh, and uh, we say, oh, that person talks a lot, that person very cheerful, that person very quiet that person, whatever, it is coming through. And that is the outward expression. But the real, your real personality, who you are, is from your spirit. It is in your spirit. That, like Here is mentioned two things only. Gentleness, quietness. But there can be other things. There can be pride, there can be humility. There can be uh, endurance, there can be weakness. There can be a lot of zeal, there can be nothing, yeah? No interest, no zeal, no passion. But where is it coming from? It is coming from the hidden person of the heart. So our, what other people call as personality, uh, quiet, gentle, whatever they may say, they may use different language to say, describe us. That is coming from where? From your heart, from your spirit. So who you are in the spirit is going to emanate, it's going to be become visible through who you are to other people. So your spirit has, I would say, I, mean, I, I use the word, your spirit has your true personality. Your spirit has your true character, character and characteristics. And those things can be developed in the spirit. You develop it in the spirit. Spiritually, you develop, you know, strength, courage, confidence, boldness, perseverance, whatever. You, know, you build that in your spirit to the word of God. Then it will come out. People see that person is very courageous. He's very determined. He has endurance. He's very strong. He's kind or compassionate or 
generous or whatever different 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 things but it's come built up in your spirit and peter is saying that is the hidden person so focus on doing that outside you can do yeah comb your hair <laughs> okay you're doing the outward adoring like that you adorn your spirit you develop those you put those things on your spirit and then he also says in the sight of god this which is very precious in the sight of god you think about this god is looking at our spirit and he is finding these things as very precious in his sight what qualities we have in our spirit that is very precious to god god is very interested in that sometimes we think does god even care you know what is happening in my spirit and peter is saying you focus on the hidden person of the heart right? which has incorruptible beauty it has character you know gentleness and quietness and what you're developing in your spirit what are you putting in your spirit that is in the sight of god very precious so human beings will appreciate what they see outside oh look how pink muscle he's got in his head. Oh. they're looking on the outside they appreciate those things god is appreciating something different he's appreciating what we are putting into our spirit how you're developing your spirit the qualities the character those things that you are adorning your spirit with he saying yeah that is very good so keep these thoughts in mind the human spirit if what you're doing in your spirit how important it is and not only for you and for us to live here but also how it is in the sight of god in the sight of god it is very precious right? so uh, some other thoughts here on page four about the inner man so there's a term called inner man you'll see it in the new testament i've meant given some references uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, Ephesians 3.16. So generally, when we say inner man or inner person, we're talking about both spirit and soul together. Hmm? Inner person, spirit and soul together. And just as a, as a side note about what happens when a person dies. Uh, when a person dies, the body decays it goes to the ground it's gone physically is gone but the inner man that is spirit and soul leave now what i must say what of course we know that the physical expression of the soul which is the brain the physical organ decays but there is uh, the soul part which is connected to the spirit because um, the spirit is not without feeling and emotion. The spirit also has that feeling. So that we say the soul part. So spirit and soul will go either to heaven or hell. Okay, so it is not floating around somewhere here. It is not in the graveyard above the above. <laughs> you know, it's not floating. The spirit. So when a believer dies, obviously, his spirit and soul go to heaven. He's there. Believer's there. Unbeliever, they go to hell, okay. separated. And we know, uh, example in Luke chapter 16, Jesus talked about the rich man uh, and Lazarus. You know, so the rich man, after he died, his he was in hell. He was in torment. That means he could feel. He said, oh, if Lazarus can at least dip his finger in some water and come and touch the tip of my 
tongue. So there is that whole. So, so of course, his body has decayed on earth, it's gone. But in hell, he can still feel, he can, he's tormented, there is agony, anguish. So there is a lot of feeling. He's also remembering his brothers. Oh, Father Abraham, please send somebody to talk to my brothers, tell them not to, so they don't come here. So he's aware of those kinds of things. There's consciousness there. You know, so that's why we say the spirit and soul are either go to heaven or to hell. Okay. Now, another aspect, as I mentioned earlier, why this is so also important is because for us, the primary way to contact or commune with God is in the spirit. So let's go to John chapter four. John 4, and uh, we know these verses, but it's good to read John 4, verses 23 and 24. Or let's say, we can read the whole passage. John chapter 4, um, 20, yeah, 23, 24. But the hour is, hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit. And truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Mm. So this woman, Samaritan woman, was talking about Jesus, uh, talking to Jesus, saying, "Okay, which mountain must we go?" You know, all those kind of things. Meaning, he, she she's focusing on the natural, which mountain to climb, what sacrifice to make, all that. He's saying, "Okay." God is spirit. And those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. So he's not looking on which mountain you're climbing, how high you're climbing, what you're doing physically, the natural. That is not the main thing. The main thing is you're looking at your spirit, looking at what is going on in your heart. Right? So that our worship of God is coming from our spirit. That is what God is looking at. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. That means he's looking at the earnestness, the sincerity, the uh, the truthfulness that you know with which we are worshiping. Yeah. The genuine. Simply anybody can climb the mountain. Anybody can go here, there. That is not what God is looking at. He's looking at your spirit. And looking at the genuineness with which you're calling out to him. And that we can do from anywhere. You don't have to be upon that mountain or this place. You can do from anywhere. Wherever you are, from your spirit and genuineness, you can call on God. And Jesus saying, The Father is looking for such kind of worship. Worship that's coming from your spirit. And that is coming with genuine sincerity and truth. He's looking for such to worship him. Philippians 3, verse 3. Paul, Paul himself repeats this. Philippians 3, verse 3. We'll look at two more verses and then we'll close. Come you can read it. Four. We are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have not confidence in the flesh. Yeah. So he's saying, we worship God in the spirit. So the wor worship is a spiritual activity. It is what we do from our spirit. So Paul is saying it's not about the circumcision. It's not about things that you're doing in the flesh. If we are worshipping in the spirit. We worship God in the spirit. Now, of course, when you're worshipping in the spirit, it will affect our mind, our emotion. We will feel joyful. We will. So he says we rejoice in Christ Jesus. So we will feel joyful. We will feel happy. We will feel the presence of God. We will 
they, it will touch our emotions and of course it will be expressed through our body. We may lift hands, we may kneel down, we may clap, we may all the expressions will happen, that's fine. But where does it actually happen? Happens in the spirit. We worship God in the spirit. And so it's not the outward form. Okay. One last verse we look at. Re Romans 1 verse 9. Romans 1 verse 9. What does Paul say in Romans 1? Romans chapter 1 verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Mm. So, he's saying, I serve God with my spirit. So, serving, ministry, is a spiritual thing. It is actually starting in the spirit. I serve God with my spirit. You didn't say I serve God with my mind or I serve God with my body. No. I serve God with my spirit. Of course we will use our mind. Of course we'll use our body. But really it's starting in the spirit. And that is where God is watching. Right? When we worship, he's looking at the spirit and truth. When we serve, he's looking at spirit and truth. Serve with my spirit. And then he goes on. He says, he tells what kind of service he's doing. He's saying, I'm praying for you. Right? Whom I pray, I'm praying, in, I'm making mention of you always in my prayers. That means, okay, you're praying. So when you're praying, you can imagine... Uh, maybe he's walking and praying up and down, or kneeling and praying, or standing and praying, sitting and praying, I don't know. But we have different postures. It's okay. Whatever posture you want, you take. You can walk, sit, stand, kneel, fine. And while praying, you're saying words. You know, maybe he's praying in tongues, maybe he's praying in his language, uh, whatever. He's saying words. Okay, good. All that is happening, but he's saying that work that I'm doing, that prayer, or that ministry that I'm doing, I'm serving God with my spirit. It's actually a spiritual work. It is coming from my spirit. So in the natural, people may hear words he's praying. They may hear some things he's saying. They may see him kneeling down, whatever. That is fine that you're seeing it in the natural, but really it's a spiritual work. We are serving God with our spirit. So... Uh, the condition of our spirit is so important. When you want to worship, you want to serve. The condition of our human spirit, right? What is the condition of the spirit? That's important. Because you're going to serve God, you're going to serve God with your spirit. It's not just a physical or a mental work. First of all, it's a spiritual work. You want to worship God? Very good. You worship from your spirit. So your condition of your spirit is important. Of course, you can sing, you can lift hands, you may play instruments, you may do all the thing in the natural. Good, good, good. But first of all, it is a spiritual work. So condition of our spirit is important. So we'll pause here for today. Maybe let me see any questions. Any questions from those here? Those are in online. Any questions? I see Nina, you've raised your hand. Okay, we'll take that. Go ahead, Prince, your question first. Uh, is it okay to unmute and discuss? Are you able to hear me? Worship is from our spirit. Like we worship God in the spirit. like, mm. And uh, it outflows with actions, like right. Uh, right, our actions of physical, uh, emotional. Yes. And uh, how we can know, like, and sometimes it can be also like uh, from the place of our emotions. Yes. We can worship from the place of emotions, but not actually we have True. that in the spirit. But how we can differentiate, like, 
because uh, the outward result is always the emotions flowing out people see that yeah so how we can differentiate that it is what we are seeing or what we are expressing our worship is actually from a place of worshiping god in the spirit or just getting emotionally uh, involved or emotionally getting high and worshiping him yeah how we can so one i the uh, fun is um that's a good question one i think most important is we can judge ourselves right i normally i should not be judging other people right okay so so for our own selves i just ask myself is my heart in it uh you know is my heart in this sometimes we go oh, man chumma clap pants <laughs> everybody is clapping i also clap but my heart is not in it then i know i'm not worshiping i'm just doing a action a ritual a form i just my clapping or lifting hands or whatever uh, but my heart is not in it why i know okay. we will we will learn as we go along first corinthians 2 paul says for what man for what man knows the things that are within the man except that the spirit of man which is in him that means your spirit that is in you actually knows you that is the real you right? so you ask your spirit ask yourself am i is my heart in this and you answer my heart is not here then okay either i get in with my heart first or i don't sometimes also very difficult because uh, it will get into it with, in worship example is with your heart because sometimes maybe it's too noisy or something whatever it's you know you, you can't get it then okay fine i'm not but i'm not going to just put on a show to my you know just simply clapping hands or making some my heart's not in it okay i'll just be quiet calm and talk to god in my heart in my spirit at least pray or just engage with god in a different way but the goal is i must engage with god in my spirit so i may not be clapping cuz i don't want to simply clap i may not be raising hands but i try to engage god engage with god in my so i have to ask myself that question is my heart in this if it's not then pause don't simply you know do something pause start from there from your heart because he said spirit and truth it should be genuine you know otherwise it's no use father is seeking for such i just take one more question here nina says after that the body continues to exist a spiritual body as in the case of rich man he felt tom and he spoke about his tongue so um after death the physical body decays disintegrates it doesn't exist right the body is gone but the spirit and soul continue and what we will learn as we see is that for the spirit being language that is used is very similar to the physical that means the spiritual has eyes it can see it has ears it can hear uh it can feel and so on so the similar language is used and that's why you also say you know we also see in luke 19 or luke 16 um the rich man says come and touch my tongue where is his tongue it already decayed and gone in the grave physical tongue we're talking about so it's not just talking about he's not talking about his physical tongue but he's talking about an 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 expression uh like like we say you know the eyes of our heart that means your spirit can see but doesn't mean it literally has a physical you know eye like that but it's talking about the faculty of your spirit that is able to see so that's what he's talking about the tongue meaning the faculty of his his being spirit and soul being that is able to experience uh, some sort of relief similar to a tongue being a thirsty tongue is being quenched by water so we have to understand it in that sense and we'll explain it uh, as we go along in this course we'll see the parallel you know between the spirit and the body uh the language that is used is same but doesn't mean there is a there's a spiritual uh, let me say there's a spiritual equivalent to you know physical eyes ears nose taste since the bible says taste and see that the lord is good how are you going to taste you know <laughs> it's not a physical i'm going to taste and see no taste and see the lord is good meaning is a spiritual expression that uh, god is you know 
as the deer pants for the water, so longs my soul after you. Doesn't mean I'm going to you know drink water like that. No, it's a, it's an expression. That's how we understand it. Okay, okay, time's up. I need to get in for the other class. Uh, we'll close. Uh, thank you for um, being on the class. We'll continue this next week. And uh, God bless. Bye now.